Hello, hello, my fellow Manifesta and my Manifesta Magic family. Welcome. And it's been a hot minute since I have um, had a video or have a conversation like that. I feel like this could be a potentially really long video. So we're going to see how we go. Um, for those of you who are new here, my name is Adeline. I am a 6'2 Splenic Manifesto. I feel like I have literally documented my entire journey of my human design experiment of meeting the different parts of myself as I truly uncover what it means to be a manifesto woman. Um, and yeah, if you have landed here through Instagram, you can scroll through 400 over of my post on, you know, on the entire journey, or you can check out the different programs that I have created to support you through um, different parts of your journey. You are the magic is the entry level to, to human design, especially if you have just discovered that you are a manifesta. And then we have manifesta, um, deconditioning and alignment made simple, which is um, a beginner to intermediate energetics um, program as to how do you truly tap into what it means to inform, to initiate, you know, the core manifestors wound, the, you know, how do you actually starting to, to get to know your energy as a manifestor. Um, one of the things that I always share is that, <clears throat> You can't initiate your energy from your energy if you're constantly stuck in other people's energy. So that is a core asset, a core part of of truly stepping in your power as a manifesto. And then we have the manifesto rising, which is the advanced manifesto um, energetics mastery. Um, that is one of my um, proudest body of work because it goes beyond the surface of what a lot of the human design or manifesto teaching is all about. And a lot of that was through my own experience. Um, you know, when I discovered human design, I was also um, go diving deep into um, the feminine and healing arts, polarity or tantric teachings, and also the shamanic way of living so there were a lot of different components that i was experimenting when i found out about being a manifesto and so how it was created was was the frustration of me not being able to understand um the essence or or, or the 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 essence of what it means to be a manifesto on a, on a deeper level, you know, as a woman, as a multi-dimensional woman, which comes in so many different layers. And, um, and also, you know, as someone who has just opened up to her hypersensitivity, um, spiritual psychic gives of being able to, to feel on a, on, on a frequency level, which means through sound, through vibrations and how that actually um, applies into that inner creative process of a manifesto and how that turns into initiation and how it turns into informing and how that turns into impact. Like there is nowhere else that explains in a way that I would like to learn. Um, so of course, in true manifesto style, I've created that. It you know all these programs has changed the lives of thousands of manifestors, mainly women. Um, and so it is a body of work that I'm extremely proud of. And also, um, in the advanced manifesto energetics mastery, I also talk a lot about how can you hack our inconsistent cycle, and also how as women and also as manifesto as manifesto women, we have access to pure creation energy if we truly tap into our creative life force. Um, that is an extension and a crossover from all the um, feminine arts, the feminine healing and, you know, tantric teaching and all that energetic work that I have dissected, I have merged and I've explained in a way that is easily digestible for you through your human design experiments. So that is that is one of my proudest work and also it's going to um, change your life if you are 
in a space where you recognize the importance of, of, of energetic work in how it is able to help you get to where you need to be. And we also have uh, the revolution, which really is for leaders and entrepreneurs who want to step into their role as revolutions and also understanding that your voice is your vehicle in which you get to deliver what you're here to deliver and also the 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 structure of, of, of how the new paradigm business looks like and how can you structure or how can you create from a place that honors your energy as a manifester and most importantly your voice as a manifester because our voice is what moves mountains whatever it is that we express is essentially the spell or the prayer in which we get to create a new reality for humanity so that is all the key programs that i have at the moment i do have welcome to bali there's a lot of constructions that are happening right now um there is also unapologetic which is the business of being you and that is essentially the art of informing um, that is something that you still have access you can purchase it right now but i will be removing that in the next couple of months because i feel that you know like the whole journey of being you being more of me like showing up as my authentic self that part that that era is over I feel like I'm, I'm deeply comfortable and embodied in who I am right now that that it just doesn't feel aligned anymore to to teach if like you're just gonna be more of you you just gonna be more you and that was a you know a tagline or is something that I have been teaching and sharing and expressing for for most of my business and it's something that is a big part of who I am and that is also one of the reasons why I have decided to call the upcoming experience emptied is because you know I feel like there is a moment where you come home to who you are you know who you are and you have worked through every anger every um, repressed emotions and every parts that you have hide from yourself and then what right because i feel that a huge part of my creation a huge part of of, of my drive a huge part of of building a successful business and everything that i do comes from a place of needing to prove myself comes from a place of wanting freedom wanting to break free of everything that i was told it comes from a place of wanting to rebel against everything and wanting to find that belonging and wanting to be loved and wanting to be seen. So even though it comes from a place of truth at that time, it wasn't from a place of love, you know? Like it, it, it's me trying to avoid and getting away from something, which means that I'm not technically free because I'm still running away from something versus accepting, embracing all that is and the totality of what it is and the totality of who I am. So that's where I have landed in this season of my life. Um, and I feel that March has been a a moment. March has quite has been quite a, a journey. I don't know if anyone else felt that way. If I could think of a word, it would be annihilation. Um, and this is also where the um, the the word or the, the vibe of these new experiences that I this new experience that I am bringing out um, why it's called because you know there is I want to find this quote that I have really resonated with um, especially in the past month or you know it has actually been that for a while now if you are a part of Manifested Diaries, which essentially is where I, um, there is like my first um, point of contact with a lot of my, my writings, my informing, my this is what's up type thing. 
Um, and also there are a lot of behind the scenes creative process um, and more intimate stories that I have now um, put behind a paywall because of how I value and how I see my art and also a whole journey of me differentiating the difference between privacy, authenticity, performing content and art. Um, that is also something that I will dive a lot deeper inside um, empty because I feel that authenticity has always been, you know, one of my values and I have always been really authentic online, but also at the same time, I feel like, you know, the line has been blurred as to, you know, whether some stuff are meant to be shared online has vulnerability unconsciously becoming a performance without us knowing because there is this need of constantly needing to have fresh content to have new vibes so there's a lot of things that has came up and that has been brought forward to to contemplate and to reflect on um and also that was also the foundation as to you know where the the next step of creation is 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 being shown and how is the creation unfold how, how will the creation be unfold if we're creating from a place of love so i want to share this quote from I Ching on how to successfully transition into a new season of life change it's like crossing a rushing river. You have to wait for the right moment. Allowing fear or impatience to drive your steps would mean certain destructions. Harvest a crop by letting the past dissolve. The fruits are ripening. Don't push the river. Sometimes when the world seems to rush faster than ever, you have to slow all the way down. You have to pause long enough to let the momentum of the old come to a full stop. Only then will you be able to see what's next. Don't push the river. When it's time to leap, you will know and God will show you exactly where to go. So that is something that I have been resonating a lot. Um, and if you have been following my work for a while, you would have known that I haven't release a brand new life program or experiences in about a year and a half besides the revolution and unapologetic container at the start where I have Q&A I haven't created a brand new experience for a while just because I was being asked to wait there were a lot of things that I wanted to share there was a lot of things that by human design standard or roles it's you know it's up to me to share it but on a deeper level there is something that's telling me that it's not time and you all know that embodied wisdom is something that i hold on to very strongly is that whatever it is that i share whatever it is that i teach whatever it is that i express on my channels whether it's my social media post whether it's a video or whether it's in my paid programs it all comes from my live experience which means i don't rejuvenate something that i've read online i don't take something that i've seen somewhere everything is through my lived experience and how I feel the timeline is is, is, is is blending together is that I felt that in 2021, which was when I created most of my programs, um, you know, that was what I was already living. That was, you know, what came through to me. That was how I really get to quantum leap into my manifesto power along with the different healing and all the stuff that I've done. And then... <clears throat> You know that has given me a taste of like what 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 highest destiny feels like and then when the borders open like everything that i've parked aside in order to do this healing in order to do this deconditioning has come back up to resurface there were things that i had to face there were things that i had to you know relearn the relationship with there were things that i had to deal with a lot of them were the human material plane stuff um so 
it was if I like 2022 was probably one of the hardest year that I've went through um and you know I'm going to dive deeper a lot deeper um in the empty experience and if if it's something that you want to be a part of um send me a message with your email address I will yeah I'll let you know when it's launched and maybe throw in a little special for those of you who are on the pre-launch list um, or the other way is just to be a part of Manifesto Diaries. Um, you can be a free subscriber or if you like to dive deeper into some of the conversations that I have or you just want to support my work, um, you can definitely become a paid subscriber. I would also release the information and all the juicy details to the Manifesto Diaries fam first. Um, so yeah, so this is what's up. Um, the the whole point of, of, of this video is to kind of give you guys an update of, you know, what other programs that we have that's able to support you through different parts of your journey um, to, to, to also let you know that a lot of them has been updated and reorganized in a way that is a lot more digestible, that makes your learning um, experiment a lot more seamless and also um, the pricing has been adjusted so that it is more accessible to more of you um and yeah and then to share about emptied because i'm, go I'm going to share um in detail inside emptied as well as to how my creative process has changed a lot in the last six months um, as I have really gone through a deep, intense dopamine detox, I have really reassessed my relationship with social media. I have reassessed my relationship with a lot of different things. Um, a key theme that I would be covering a lot inside this experience is integrity, discernment, responsibilities, and discipline. You might have heard me talk about that um, in the last three months or if you're part of the paid subscribe subscription of Manifesto Diaries that is something that I've also spoken about but it has become a lot more um, apparent now it has become a lot more alive because I feel that you know in that in that space of, of healing our feminine of tapping into our pleasure of tapping into our sexual energy in tapping into the energetic field what we have forgotten is that energetics are formless so without the right container without the right anchor without the right discipline and devotional practice it is very easy for us to go 50 different places and also i think this this is probably more towards like creative sexual energy is that activating that sexual energy is only the first part of it learning how to move with it learning how to work with it and learning how to actually contain it without leaking it all around it comes down to integrity discernment discipline and responsibility so this will be a complement to the different energetic um programs that i've already created and i feel that you know it is a part of the journey that we all have to be to go through i was in a conversation today and we were talking about, you know, where do you start if you're at the start of your healing journey? Because, you know, say, for example, a guitar has like a thousand strings that needs to be tuned. How do you even start? You start with the first string. You just have to start with the first string. So, you know, if it doesn't matter where you are on your journey, if you come across this video, if you come across this, this transmission, Tune in and ask yourself, what is calling and what is asking of you right now? Like what program or what experience do you need right now that is going to support you on this journey, that is going to take you into the highest alignment of your destiny, of what you're here to do? And listen to your body and really allow this place of silence. Or maybe it's something that you have to come back um, at a later date. So that is essentially the core of what this is all about. Um, you know, I am a splenic manifester, but I'm also very, very in touch with my emotions because my moon is in Scorpio and I have 
very strong scorpionic energy in my chart, which means that I, I feel deep and I crave sometimes not to my best interest, the intensity and in that, you know, that scorpionic energy. So, you know, may, I might not understand completely ever how emotional authority make decisions, but emotions are a big part of my life and it's that way. And needing to really empty, dissolve, unplug, unhook of everything that I have ever known that I've taken, especially the last three years, I feel that there is such a rapid expansion of consciousness. There is so much quantum leaping. Everything was fucking happening at a quantum rate at this while well, simultaneously our human body is slowing down to catch up. So, you know, that has also allowed me to redefine what peace means to me. Um, so I'm going to go through briefly what what is coming up in empty which is i'm which i'm really excited but it's a very different energy and that's also something that i want to share inside of that i feel that i i don't know what to do with myself or i don't know how to well i guess i do but i think it's this massive like it's not fear but there is this 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 edge of me no longer coming like an explosive of like, all right, we are going to fuck shit up today. We are fucking shit up. But, it, you know, that's my that's my tagline for this year. But, you know, if you go back and look at my videos from a year ago, from six months ago, from two years ago, from when I first started this, 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 this account and this brand, like so much has changed. But you know, this is the word that I always tell myself, right? Like before I, I, I'm i about to go to a ceremony or before I'm about to make a big decision. It's like, of course, I'm going to be a different person coming out. If I'm going to be the same person, why am I even doing this? So I know that, but I feel that a big part, a big part of my identity, a big part of who I am, a big part of what has brought me here was that rebellious, wild, and I'm still wild, but my wild means very different things. And to give you a context also, like y'all know that I am kinky as fuck. I talk about sex. I talk about taboo a lot. And that's also one of the main reasons why a lot of my clients decide to work with me, which by the way, speaking of clients, I have four one-on-one, I have four spots open for one-on-one -on -one, um, mentoring with me. It is a three or six months journey for deep healing, transformation, creation, a place where you truly get to be supported, get to be held and having someone to walk this path with you. And if this is speaking to you and if this is what you've been waiting for, there are two different tiers in which we get to work together on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The tier one is just video um, calls three times a month and then tier two is three video calls per month plus voice and tech support in between the calls so if that's something that is of interest and if that's something that you know it's time send me a message on instagram send me an email or send me can you send a message on youtube i don't know but um, yeah, just drop me a message and we can have a conversation to see if this is in alignment or if this is the right time for you. So where are we? Okay, I want to actually share a little bit behind the conversations that is going to happen inside um, MT, the MT experience. And also there's one part that... Um, there's a part that that has been coming through for me and I was listening to this um, message from um, one of the um, indigenous tribe, um, this soundtrack on Spotify, is that the day of Lone Wolf is over and we're here to create communities. We are here to create ecosystem. And that is something that I have been very resistant towards, right? Um, if you have come across my work before, you know I write a lot about aloneness i write a lot about being a lone wolf i write a lot about that accidental part about being a manifesto woman about being an artist of 
if how do you need that space to 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 create to brew and to initiate whatever it is that needs to be created um you know but at the same time on the other end of the spectrum there is also this yearning there's also this calling of wanting to start community and i know that i'm a great connector when i want to but at the same time you know i also spoke about this a lot inside manifesto diaries as to the the fine line between peace and avoiding stepping into my power and so community is something that has came up you know a little bit and um i met one of another incredible manifesto um someone came up to me um when i was on the beach when i was um on a beach walk for sunset a week ago um atia hello if you're watching this and she smiled and then i turned around smiled back at her and then she was like i follow your work um long story short we ended up grabbing a coconut together um listened to jazz and yeah you know it it was at that moment that i was reminded that how you know my work has brought me to so many of you guys and to 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 even imagine that I have connected so many many festers around the world and there are only eight percent of us and this is also another conversation that i would touch inside emptied experience which i will get into in a moment if you have been on my live if you've been on my video you know that whatever comes through comes through and you know it's just a conversation um is that you know when i'm sitting with what i want to do with this this brand because you know i i shared about this end of last year where you know i think that there's something more but there is no more there is no more seeking like there's no more that was the message that i got and you know it's been a a, a three months journey of of sitting with that um and then one of the things that has you know as a result of there's no more what has came through that is that the more really is a deepening of my relationship with god or rather the start of a committed and devoted relationship with god this is something that i have sat with for a while as to whether i want to openly talk about this because you know, I needed to tune in and check in with the intention as to whether I'm doing this because, you know, it's, 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 it's not really a buzzword really. Okay. It's taboo, but to check in, to see the intention behind it as to why I'm sharing this and is to tune in, to see if it's something that I'm already practicing without being on camera, or is it something that I am like, oh my God, it's a cool thing to try um because that was actually kind of how like you know new exper experience has kind of catapulted me into this journey of mine and so i had to sit with that and then there was this realization um you know around my relationship with god and all of that with sacred union with beloved this wasn't part of what i was planning to to share inside emptied experience but i feel that that was a big part of, of, of my journey and also a very big element of my annihilation month in March. So if it's something that you would be interested in learning um, on on the, the yearning or the choice of a sacred union partnership is actually yearning for, for God, for God's providership. Um, that's something that I am I have been on, but at the same time, there were new information that I'm dissecting into, which means I get to share that journey with you. If that's something that's of interest, let me know. Um, you know, I can definitely add into this experience. And I feel like the best part about creating these live experiences is that I have these core like topics or core themes that I really want to cover and share with you, which I feel that, you know, they're many of you guys who are also going through the same thing but the beauty of a live container which was the whole point as to why i brought up the community and why the time of lone wolf is over because that is going to be a key element of emptied experience where 
you know, it's going to be really active where we're going to, you know, you guys are going to be a part of shaping this experience of what you want to know based on what I've shared. And I was also thinking of like an open mic. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have experienced open mic, but I feel that I also want to offer this opportunity and this space in which you get to express and share what has come through for you as you have been emptied. So I feel that a big part of why I was avoiding um, community space for a long time is because I don't want to hold I don't want to hold an accountability community accountability community space. I realized as a manifesto, the last thing I want to do is to hold you accountable because I believe that we're all sovereign liberated beings. If you need someone to hold you accountable, entrepreneurship and leadership is probably not your path. Um, your path is probably something else. So that's probably one of the things why I have been very resistant towards, but now I've shifted that as me being a facilitator and a host of having eight to 10 leaders in a room in which we get to start and we get to have new conversations. I have kind of experimented that insight revolution a couple of months ago, and I feel like now it's time, you know, I, I am in a very grounded and rooted spot to be able to hold the space, to be able to hold these conversations. And I'm really excited to see what gets to activate from here and what gets to unfold having like eight to 10 powerful manifestors, you know, who has been in the business, who has been entrepreneurs, which has been, who has been leaders and really, how do you bring all of these together and bringing and co-creating this vision and having all of us in our unique gives in in our unique power and our voice i don't know there's only one way to find out so if you want to be the first to find out um you can subscribe to manifested diaries or send me a message and i'll add you to the list so that um you would be the first to find out when it's launched it would be probably in a week or two when I, you know i'm really wanting to ground a space for this one because this is going to be massive and back to my point of why i brought god into this conversation is because you know in that in that void of trying to figure out what 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 to do with this brand because i didn't set up one day of going i'm gonna just be a manifesto mentor i'm just gonna be a manifesto influencer i'm gonna be a voice of manifesto it's like i had my private account and somehow there was this nudge there was this urge of creating a separate account and you know it grew into the brand business uh, the impact and you know the community that i have today through god's plan but then at this but then i've kind of lost that connection and passion for it um and one thing that i was also very aware of is to not burn things down in the name of we're not meant to finish stuff because i believe that that is a very it, it holds a very avoidant energy and i have burned a lot of things down to the ground and there is its merit to that again a, a conversation to have inside the emptied experience i'm actually super excited about that already like just on top of what i have written down it feels like there are so many conversations that we can have as a leader as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, as a steward of, of our mission of the land, of money, of, of, of creating whatever it is for the future generations through our voice, through our stories. And now I feel the passion coming through after 30 minutes. Um, so, you know, it, it is going to be a co-creation between you and I because the message of how, you know, I've downloaded a whole vision of the heart as dimension about a year ago, you know, about two, about a year ago and i feel that okay the pieces are really coming together and when i went through my google doc this morning i'm like how the fuck is this gonna happen i just look at it i'm like and then i remember like it's not my job to figure it out how, how my job here is to activate is to share this is to make this template available to those who are ready for it and also you know it, it is a co-creation with god because god will share would make this available to those who needs it right now. So we are now ready to go through 
what is it that I want to cover inside MT, um, the MT experience. <clears throat> so a very important one is finding peace in resolving codependency avoidance. Codependency and avoidance. Because I feel that a lot of us um, have this extreme of wanting to be committed to service, to be off service and the extreme of savior complex where we have no boundaries, where we do not have a great grasp of what, what our needs are and how to have them met. And then there is this like pendulum pull between both ends. And so that's a very important conversation and also an important conversation to have in this module is the extreme between over responsibilities and then full blown hedonism, recklessness in the name of liberation and individualism. So there's this pull between both. It's like, all right, I'm liberated, but I'm constantly running away from something instead of facing it with love, with compassion, loving the totality of it and really leaning into what is um, and how this would have played out in terms of our money story how that plays out in relationships um, how that play out in terms of us not fully stepping into our power um, so that's an important topic that i want to share because it is something that i have really been diving very deep in the last year of integration not channeling or knowing you know what my attachment theory but actually having the difficult conversations really meeting all the parts of myself that I have avoided all the responsibilities that I have avoided which you know I, I truly believe that they're all for the greater good and it's you know part of them is needed for me to break free of any old beliefs and system but also there is a responsibility part that comes with it so that is going to be a very rich and very deep but very much needed conversation because the question that I have for you is that are we truly liberated or are we just running away from responsibilities? So that's something to really think about. And that's also something that I covered inside the revolution um, program and experience as to, you know, what is what does it mean to be in our power and what does it mean to be in creator's consciousness? Because I feel that a lot of us, when we first started on this human design journey, especially in Manifesto, it's like, well, we are the victim. You know, we are not understood by the world. The generators are here to make our lives hard. All of that. I've made a lot of reels around that. But that's the old story. It's good for us to, 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 to feel seen in that aspect. But it comes a point of, are you going to continue to let that story dictate how your reality is going to be? Or are you going to like just bowl the fuck up and then choose a different reality? So that's a big part of what we're going to be covering about. And I would also go deep into the lessons that I've learned from exploring kink, conscious kink, to being celibate for two years. So kink was the safety my nervous system needed, but I didn't know my nervous system needed. And it has opened me up to being able to hold experience and lean into a full range of sensations which was the foundation of a lot of the teachings that i have inside of manifesto rising as to knowing how to work with the nervous system and then there's a celibacy part where true liberation that comes from the ability to say no the discernment the capacity and the responsibility of knowing how to channel my own energy. So that's a very important conversation that I also will be covering in that transmission. And we're going to talk about service, money and stewardship. So what are you actually in service to? You know, like I think we spend a lot of the past couple of years trying to decondition, trying to heal, trying to fix stuff which was necessary for us to get to where we are now to, to, to be able to hold more, to be able to, to be a clear vessel, to have 
you know, to be able to build a world free of all the old stories that we've been told. But then there comes this point of what are we truly in service to? What is our mission? What is the legacy we're here to create? What is the movement and revolution we are here to start or we're here to facilitate or we're here to walk the path first? And from that space, how is this translating into money and what does it mean with our stewardship? So all of this is linked together and it comes from also truly stepping into our power, truly stepping into being able to see in our light because, um, you know, you, because I feel that some of you may have noticed this or you might have seen this within yourself of, I just want to make enough money and just go live in the jungle. And y'all know I have been battling with this for about a year and a half. And every time I try to go in, something just push me out. There is this link between avoidance, responsibilities, and also like fully claiming our calling out and our soul mission on this planet of what we're here to create, of, of what we're in service to. And also really being able to relax, to be seen fully in our light and our power. And I received this message through a conversation a couple of weeks ago, is that the yearning to be seen in our darkness and depth is the desire to be seen in our light and height. And that is something that I noticed I was, like I have no problem being seen in my darkness and my shadow and my death, but being seen in my light and love, like the immense of love that I have at the moment, it was it is very uncomfortable for me because you know there's all these identities there's all these versions of adeline that i was so used to having people see me so that's also a topic that i will dive deeper into the emptied experience y'all know the whole feeling seen being seen showing up as your authentic self is my life work but there are still different edges there are new edges that are being asked to push and we are going to dive deeper into that and i feel that if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a CEO, if you have a business in which you are here to channel your mission and your voice and be a messenger as an artist, then this is very much relevant to you because evolution is the natural progression of nature of who we are as human beings. And as we evolved, so is our message, so is our product, so is our experience, so is our entire business. Like it carries a whole different frequency. And if you've been through your spiritual awakening journey, if you've been through all these different moments, you would know that every time as you know, as you shed off a new layer, as the new um, reality reveals itself from you. It's very destabilizing. It's it's your entire world fucking going down and coming up again. And so it's 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 easy sometimes for us to choose to play small. It's easy sometimes for us to choose peace of not wanting to go through that metamorphosis. And there are times where you're not meant to, you know. And so we're going to dive deep into that. Um, of service, money, and stewardship. We are going to also speak about restored authenticity. I covered about this at the start of this video on, you know, really knowing what your voice is as your voice shift, as you evolve as a human being, as your consciousness evolve, as you have integrate more of your own lived experience and personal wisdom. And also understanding the need for privacy and that unconscious, like unconscious lead to perform. And I feel that that comes with just how much fucking information that's coming through the internet. So that is a conversation that we will be going through. And then there is um, a conversation that I'm very excited to have is the evolution of technology, creativity, and spirituality. I feel that I have gone through the extreme end of both. As usual, 
not even surprised anymore where i just want to have off the grid i want to just go whatever no internet nothing and just never speak to the world again and then i have also put myself deep into web3 for a moment uh, last year some of you may remember um, I have also explored with AI um, through some experiment through, you know, how it can further improve my work without compromising on authenticity, without compromising on truth. And I want to share my nuance on that. I want to share some behind the scenes. I want to share how that can actually help facilitate your creative process and also understanding that you are who you are and that if you are certain and you're tapped into who you are, technology could be something that's there to enhance your your creativity and your the work that you're here to do. So that is a conversation that I'm very, very excited to have. And also I'll peel back the layers around how I have rewritten um, my relationship with social media and how that was, that was a journey. So there were a lot, there's going to be a lot of um, depth that we're going to dive into this topic. And the last one is around sustainability and safety, which is the foundation of your peace template. Um, yeah, how are you not needing to go on this feast famine um, cycle? How can you hold the full range of, of the sensations of, of peace, of passion, of needing to speak your truth, of not wanting to be a part of all these energies that are not quite manifesto. And it happens sometimes. And how can you find that balance of not being a snob, not having this God superiority complex, but also honoring your peace, how to feel safe in your safety, that how do you feel safe in your body and how can you have sustainable energy so that you're not on this hamster wheel of like fuck i'm super creative and then i burn out and rinse repeat so those are the key um topics that we'll be um covering inside emptied experience it is going to be a combination of transmissions which means it is what i share through words through language so that you have a new pers new perspective to contemplate and to reflect back on your own experience and there are also going to be embodiment practices because your body holds the truth that you need to hear and you know to break free of what you've known you have to move breathe a different way so there are going to be embodiment practices and if you've been in any of my programs before or you have um, bought my activation bundle you know that my embodiment practices are life-changing it basically shifts you out of your it's a pattern interrupter and it shifts you out of your autopilot mode through tapping into altered state of consciousness without the need of plant medicine. Something that I'm very proud of. And there's also going to be community of leaders co-creating, of sharing what comes up to you. And it is going to be a very, like, it's going to be a very grounded and solid container. And it's something that I also would have asked for you to only go through this experience without going through any other form of learnings or, or, or teachings that you have at the moment. If you do, this is probably not the place to be because the key, the main vision that I have for this is that this container is a place for you to slow down, for you to unpack, for you to have enough space to be able to receive and really plug into what it is that you're here to create. This is the place where you get to pause to let the momentum of everything that you've created up until now so that you can actually hear your own voice your own voice and God's voice coming together and having a conversation. I'm here to hold the space. I'm here to be a vessel. I'm here to be an instrument. I'm here to curate experiences that tap you into that space. But this is really a space between you and God. And, you know, if you are in the midst of other programs or other containers, 
I would definitely recommend you to maybe try this at a different date. It would be available as a self-study program after. Um, but yeah, this is something that, as the title suggests, it's called Emptied, for you to dissolve the past, destroy, unplug of everything that no longer serves what you're in service to. So that's the update. If that is something that you're interested in, um, you can definitely subscribe to Manifesto Diary so that you would be the first to find out about this or send me a message and let me know if you're interested. Um, or if this is not the time for it and if you want to check out different programs that I have, you can click on the link in bio on Instagram or if you are watching this on YouTube, like everything is down below. And if you want to claim one of the four, four spaces for my one-on-one -on -one private mentoring, send me a message on Instagram and yeah, I wouldn't wait too long because these four spots are going to go. So thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope that, you know, something shift for you. I am excited to see where this gets to go. And, you know, I feel that to be able to have over 3,000 of you manifestors, of you rev revolutionaries who has pure creation and initiation energy that has chosen to follow my work and now I'm just a vessel to transmit whatever it is that needs to be transmitted to you. This is fucking wild. This is fucking wild and this is 2023. So I'll catch you next time.